years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the most infected city in the world, it's time for the Ramble with Alex Bennett. We'll be here until midnight Eastern Time. Ladies and gentlemen from the lovely Bay Area, a home which I miss. I also miss this fellow and his bonhomie. That's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, Alec. Do you actually really miss the Bay Area? Yes, I do. Wow. I really do. Every time I see a movie or TV show about it, I, I kind of go, oh, I, I miss that city so much. But, you know, I mean, I may go back and be totally disappointed, you know. You may be. There's rumors that Fry's may be going under. That would be the final straw. Fry's is going under. Fry's is that's, the biggest. Th- they say they're not, but there's... Uh, I was in their store before this virus thing, and there was like, you know how big those stores are. There was like six people in there. Yeah, well, it was a huge, huge um, uh, technology uh, store, okay? I mean, huge. Uh, They had one that they bought that was the biggest in the world up in Sacramento. And, I mean, I went up there once to see that after they bought it, and it was just amazing, just amazing. Um, but I can't believe that they're going out of business. I can't believe, here's what I can't believe, that you went into a technology store. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe, they, they, maybe. They do have some interesting things. They, they sell furniture. God, this one had furniture. Yeah. It had uh, snacks. It had everything. Mm-hmm. Kind of, kind of the Costco of technology. Yeah, yeah it is. It, it literally, it had to be the size of two football fields. Yeah, but I mean, you would go down there if you were into technology, and you wouldn't know what to buy first. I, I mean, wouldn't it, know. Yeah, you know, I always spend a lot of money in that joint every time I walked in the door. But, well, they they claim they're not going under, so maybe they'll be saved. I hope so. Yeah, but what I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, I was thinking about this last night. You know. Comedians, correct me if I'm wrong. You, you, the first minute or so of your act, maybe two minutes, but usually the first minute, is trying to establish your voice and drag people into your world. Am I right about that? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if people get what I'm saying, but if you've got a comedian, say like Lewis Black, in the first minute of his act, he has to establish what his voice is to people who've never seen him before and what world he's bringing you into and how, how it's skewed. Um, and then you always have to find some bit, some line, something that kind of drags them into it. Am I, am I making sense? Do I, am I speaking right yeah, about this? Yeah, you hit him, especially in a, uh, like a, if you got five minutes, like on the Letterman shot or something like that, where you really got to get your character out there quickly. So. Well, like on Letterman, what was your first line? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's uh, been a great day. Someone stole my identity. Now his life sucks. But, which that's one of the few things I've done right that actually sets up the entire character in the first joke. So. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, I was going to ask you how do you how do you open up your act? Is that pretty much how you open up yeah, your act? Yeah, yeah. Just with a, it was very usually that's I use that one for years, but use a very self-deprecating joke and that oh this guy's this guy's life sucks that yeah. sets up the character right there right and then you can go ahead and now that they're in your world yeah you can tell you jokes do, suited to that world just do jokes suited to that and uh, that's a lot of comics do have a problem getting their point across that quickly yeah but that's important that you do that especially if you've got a character you're playing one of the few things i did right yes <laughs> one of the few things you did. Well, you know, I mean, you're, you're, I think you're one of the funniest people out there. I mean, if <laughs> people haven't seen your act, you know, uh, and there are a lot of people who haven't seen your act. Um, uh, you, you're, you're one of the funniest, you know. Well, thank you. One but, of the uh, one of the weirdest compliments I ever got was uh, Robin Williams said to me, I can't do what you do. And I said, fail. And he said, 
No, he w- and then he brought this up. He said, I can't talk about myself. And then I realized Robin was always kind of in a character or something like that. He never did talk about himself. And I, I don't know why, if he felt insecure about doing that or not. I, I don't think that would have worked within his act, do you? I don't think so, because he would just come out in some crazy character, remember? just Well, you never knew who Robin Williams was as a person, because he was just riffing and going back and forth and with this and with this character and that character and doing some character. And, blah, blah, blah. and there was never a moment where it landed on... So I was taking my wife to the doctor the other day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And normally that way you're normally that wouldn't work for people, but it made him the biggest ever. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, yes. Uh and and, and uh, Jonathan Winters was that way too. You don't know about Jonathan Winters' personal life, although you read about it in the papers sometimes. Uh but uh on the other hand, uh you talk about stuff that's in your life, you know. Uh, uh, just as a radio personality, I used to talk about my life all the time. That's what it was all we were about. Both, yeah, we both wore our hearts on our sleeves. Yeah, yeah, and we would talk about the experiences of uh, of going out and so on. You, you know, today I had a, a, a flashback to San Francisco. Uh, the Blue Angels have decided, in tribute of our health care workers, they're going to do a flyby in New York. And you remember what I how, how I used to react to them doing it for Navy Week <laughs> yeah. in San Francisco. I hate the fucking flyboys that do their little t- tricks and go upside down and come close to buildings and things like that. Because one day, one day, one of them is going to come down and kill people. Oh yeah, it's a uh, it's only it, ma- it, it's a good show, but this is not the place to do it. it, it it's only a matter of time. And then I also it, they used to do it. They used to do. But they called their rehearsal. I, I love this. It would on Friday. There were the uh, Blue Angels would be out there rehearsing today. So what? We're not supposed to look. You know. I mean, <laughs> what, what? What do you mean a rehearsal? It, it and it was a major annoyance because I would catch a nap around oh one o'clock to three because I would get up so early. I would get a two hour nap. Then I could sleep only for six hours. I'd go to bed at you know. 11 o'clock at night like everybody else. And I'm trying to sleep and hear these guys who go right over my apartment. You know, oh, It sounds like the roof's coming off. Yeah, I yelled at them. I, said, I went on the air and I just blasted them. And then they offered to take me up in their planes. <laughs> and I said to them, fuck you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know? I don't understand it. You know? So anyway, so we... we uh, um, that, that, that was me and the, and the Blue Angels, but how do you hold it up in all of this now? You know, I feel like I'm under house arrest, which is someone said a quarantine was there was that's when they put sick people, they lock them up, and now they're locking everybody up. And, well, you're not under quarantine because you don't have the illness, so they're not saying stay home because of the illness. They're saying stay home so you won't, you know, you won't get the illness. Uh, does not bring up any constitutional rights issues? I don't look, you know, can I can be bold by saying something as simple as fuck the constitutional rights? (laughs) Uh, I have a constitutional right to live. okay? and if you do something that comes between me and life, uh, fuck you and fuck the Constitution. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think I just think this has been an overreaction. I think they. Sweden didn't shut down. They got about the same numbers we do. They have a, but they have a different population. You know, they have different socialization. I don't, I don't know that that's, you know, that, that, that we overdid it. We didn't overdo it here in New York. Well, you've got the density problem there. Yeah, because what happened in New York was we were so good about this. I mean, New Yorkers are really tough people. And they said, you said, you want us to stay in because it's going to save lives? Okay, we can do it. You know, you want us to wear masks outside? We can do it. I mean, everybody's wearing a mask here, right? Um, If you go out in San Francisco, how many people are wearing masks? They only wear masks here when we go into stores. Yeah. No, they're wearing masks everywhere here. And in my case, I wear gloves, too. And a lot of people wear gloves. Uh 
And we have managed to take the death rate and in the last uh, couple of weeks cut it in half. You know, by staying inside and by when we go out social distancing and being very uh, assiduous in this, um, because it, it saved our lives. So I can't imagine any other solution to the problem. But I can see where you're sitting in San Francisco and going, ah, this is overkill. Why I think we, it's a little overkill. Yeah. What? It's a, <laughs> it's a lower kill. I mean, your 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 governor is getting worried. Gavin Newsom on TV saying, you know, you people at the beaches are crazy. We open the beaches and you don't apply by the rules. Yeah, I think, and so he just shut us down for another month. Yeah, and, and as well he should. California was in there very early in curbing this thing. And so that's why you haven't had the amount of death, say, that we have in New York State. Um, uh, But he was good at closing things down fast. And that's why the death rate in California is surprisingly low. Very low. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if you then don't apply those any longer, if you suddenly say, okay, everybody go outside. The sun is shining and the birds are singing. Get out there. You can see a, a rise in the death rate. You're going to see a rise in the incidence rate because this virus is still there. So you know, well, it, it, well, how long can this go on? Well, we're. I'm figuring that uh, we're going to be staying indoors here. I mean, they're going to start opening a few things, okay? But we're basically going to stay indoors here. I would say I'd give it another two months at least. Yeah. You know. I mean, um, it's, it's, and then, it, okay, let's say, Bubs, that tomorrow they open up the movie theaters. Are you going to go? Uh, oddly enough, I might. But really? I think most people, yeah, people are not going to storm out right away. They're going to, I, I mean, think they're, I've heard talks about some, some of the clubs when they open, it's going to be, uh, they're going to allow a third of capacity in. Yeah. So people be sitting apart. And- okay, so they say the third of the capacity. They're going to pay, they're probably going to wind up paying you a third of what they normally pay you. <laughs> yes. I'm serious. Of, of course. So. You know, they're going to go, well, you know, we don't have as many people in here, so we can't pay you what we normally pay you. That's true. Yeah. You, now you're going to get 30 cents. You know, I mean, that's that's going to be the problem. You have a restaurant, and they have to cut their capacity in half because they've got to get the tables further apart. They're going to charge double for dinner. You know, they just, they've just they got to do that in order to break even. They're not going to say, oh, we're going to charge the same price as we always charge because the cost of doing business has gone higher. So, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know how this is going to play itself out, but I think that we will probably – within uh, a couple of months, be able to kind of go outdoors more. I mean, by then I'm going to look like the old man from the hills because I need a haircut desperately. We're going to look like Howard Hughes. Yeah. I love watching TV and seeing all these news reporters who can't get haircuts or makeup people. You know, (laughs) Uh, they just somehow they look different. Their hair's a little stringier. You know, especially the women, like on MSNBC, you know, they have usually the hair is well done and the makeup is beautiful. And then they're doing it themselves at home. And it's, you know, it's it's incredible. It is just it's been an incredible event. And, uh, you know, governors have a hard time with this. I mean, our guy Cuomo was on today and he's having trouble trying to figure out exactly how to bring people back to the workforce, you know, things like that. So uh, you're at, you still go out running, right? I'm still running, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you do it with a mask or without a mask? No mask. No mask. Okay. Are there many people out there? Or, or there are. There are a lot of. It's very warm here now. So there are a lot of people out this week. Well, California. Uh, you know, California. I mean, it's different than here. I mean, this is a very dense population. You know, so you can you can you, you can go running and probably not be anywhere near somebody. Even if it's so crowded. It, how many people are out in New York? A little more today because it's sunny than on a normal day, but not not as much. I mean, it's a pretty quiet city all the way around. And they're thinking of opening up the streets because they say there's so little traffic. 
opening up the streets, at least half of the streets, to pedestrian traffic so that you can maintain that distance more when you're walking down the street. So, you know, it's, it's, they're trying to solve a totally unsolvable problem and what have you. It's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. Um, so any words of wisdom, uh, Bubs, that you're going to give us? We're all, all going to die. We're all going to die. I did have a COVID joke. Oh, do you have a COVID? Let's go yeah. over here. I don't care if we run long. Oh, give okay. me, get Larry Bubbles Brown now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is, is going to. Every, is, everybody's it, pitching in. It, Even pimps are putting on latex gloves before they slap unruly hose. <laughs> Is that your only COVID That's joke? I, I think I had a couple more, but I forgot what they were. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. Hey, listen, we've run out of our usual we time. Have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate in this day with this corona- virus, we literally may be running out of time. Well, that I say, I, I hate to say we're running out of time anymore because we probably literally are if this thing gets any worse. <laughs> Anyway, I uh, we always enjoy talking to the lovely and Good to attra- hear from you, buddy. L- lovely and attractive Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Bubs. Thanks, Alex. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, there he is, Larry Bubbles Brown. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn on my lights. Turn on your red lights. Ah. Ooh, ah. There we go. I'm sorry. I forgot that. I sit here, I'm having a good time listening to Larry, and I don't think about the fact that I have to come back and talk with you, okay, uh, so I don't turn on the lights. But now, you see, it's so much better with the lights on. I it look, uh, look uh, swell, don't I? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let me see here. Uh, we got to go to the, uh, the, the map. Got to show you the map. This is the world map. This shows us how we're doing in the world uh, with this uh, coronavirus thing. Um, this little virus, little uh, little uh, little touch of the virus that we have here. Uh, there's the world as we see it tonight. Three million. They passed the three million mark internationally. 3,115,977, okay, totally confirmed cases. There may be far more than that, all right? Uh, total deaths, wait a minute, come on, I don't want that. Yeah, I hate I hate this map. It, it, they, they've got to work on it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, so uh, that's what we got for that. Then we go to the United States. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, um, come on, come on, jeez. All right, there we go. Okay, the number popped up right. One hit, we went over a million. Went over a million total confirmed. Now, again, we don't know that that's entirely 100% true uh, because there are a lot of people, these are people that have been counted. You know, their people may have it, goes away, they forget about it. And they get on with their business, you know. And they say, what's with all this coronavirus stuff? So, but that's, that's confirmed, all right? Total deaths, here's the number we don't like. 58,355 souls who were here a couple of weeks ago, and they're not here now, and they didn't expect it, okay? They were perfectly healthy. They were living healthy lives, and now they're, they're dead, okay? All right. Uh, let me turn on that fan a little higher. Okay, here we go. There we go. Um, let me see here. Uh, and we're here in New York City. We're at uh, 17,682 deaths. Uh, that's not good either. Okay, uh, number two, Spain. They're not doing as badly. They only got uh, 23,822 deaths. Uh, Italy... Uh, they got 27,359 deaths. France, 23,694. United Kingdom, 21,745. Germany, only 6,314. Turkey, 2,000, 
99. Oh, you see, wouldn't you rather be there? Russia? I don't know. Do you believe that? Do you believe that there are only 867 cases of COVID in Russia, a country that's right next to China? Come on. Hmm? That's ridiculous. Okay. And Iran, 5,877 out of 92,000. 584 confirmed. So that's a, that's a pretty steep death rate. You know, you compare that to the death rate in the United States, you know, we look bad, but uh, really we're about the same they are. We're at about 5% in, in deaths uh, to, to that. Okay, so anyway, that's, uh, that's the sad news, folks. Uh, d- do I have any uh, unsad news? Well, no, not really. No, not really. Let me see here. Let me go and deep, uh, deep, 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 deep. Go to um, um, yeah, Skype. Here we go. I have to have to bring it up. It takes it some time to come up. Sometimes I don't know why. I have no idea. Just that it does. Okay, there we go. It's coming up. It's there we go. We're up, and I'll put on my little green light, and I'll go to active, okay? Fooling around today with Zoom because I have somebody who might be doing an interview with me tomorrow on Zoom. Boy, I, I, you know, it's it's just so much trouble for me to use for this this kind of thing. It doesn't work well uh, until somebody starts coming up with, uh, you know, a fix for it uh, that would make it easier. But... um, uh, you know, Skype is my is my bitch, so I have to live with it. Um, okay, here comes Rob Alfano, ladies and gentlemen. First, right out of the uh, out of the box is Rob. Uh, let me see, Rob, where were you last time? I can't remember where you were last week. Well, I don't remember where I was five minutes ago. You don't so remember don't where you me. were five minutes ago. <laughs> Okay, so there goes Rob Alfano. We put him in the number one spot. Here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, I think he was somewhere last week on the first uh, page, wasn't he? No, I guess not. I don't know. Uh, Vernon Nunn here is calling. Hold on a second. First, let me get uh, let me get Phil here. Uh, scuba diver. Okay, uh, is he there? Yep, yep, yep. And then we go to Vernon Nunn. We put Vernon up, and uh, we got him. Uh, hello, Vernon. How are you this evening? Oh, look at him. Wait a minute. I got to go to the picture. Look at him. Looks like he's ready to rob a grocery store. Now, this is my Home Depot uniform. Is it really? Yeah. And does everybody dress that way at Home Depot, or you just be playing it extra safe? Most of the associates do, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. Now, they say that one of the risk, high-risk groups are people with who've had cancer. So, so does that include us? Oh, wait, 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 turn down your yeah, turn on your audio there, Charlie. Uh, does that include us? I'm wondering. I'm not sure it does. Uh, you know, unless you have other immune system problems, I'm yeah. not sure prostate cancer would make you any more susceptible. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was just wondering about that because, it, you know, they say, hey, you know, if you've recently been operated on for cancer, you know, well, I have been, uh, but I'm, I'm just wondering if uh, that's, you know, if that's, a, if that's a negative for me. But anyway, we went out today, which I'll, I'll show you the video tomorrow. Um, but we went, I went out today and we were, I was, I had the gloves and I had the, you know, the mask and I... Then I came home and I uh, washed my hands and took a shower and then I autoclaved myself, you know, and uh, I'm playing it right. No, you took your mask off. Now we're all going to catch it. <laughs> Where did you put your mic when your mask was on? In your in your mask? No, it's on the Oh, it's on oh the okay. All right. I love, I love seeing all these reporters on these networks. Uh, wearing their masks and stuff and broadcasting from their home and also seeing how bad their hair is. 
I had to take it off because it was fogging up my glasses. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that happens. I found that when I was walking today, I was, I was... Now, I don't know if it's because I just haven't been out of the house in six weeks, basically. But we were walking, and I was running out of breath. I was getting short of breath. Uh, and uh, I also got on the scale, and I, I weigh... Uh, uh, let's see here. Six pounds more than I did the last time I weighed myself. Mm. Because I I don't get any exercise here, you know. And then you kind of you eat some stuff, and it's not. I have a croissant every morning, but then I don't eat anything till dinner, so I don't know what you know. Mm. But anyway, so we took the walk, and I'm trying to figure out why I'm breathing heavy. Whether it's because I uh, I I am out of shape from having uh, uh, you know gone to. Uh, uh, here, I'm trying to do something at the same time I'm talking to you. That I'm out of shape or that I'm just, you know, that it's it's the mask that I'm wearing, for instance, that's causing the problem. So I don't know. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to... God, do I hate Chrome or what? There we, let me, there we go. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get back to my... I have to be, make it full screen when I show that world map. And um, uh, so, anyway, okay, all right. So anyway, so I'm I'm out of breath. I'm wondering maybe if it's the mask that I was wearing. Is it? Can you get a little out of breath from wearing that mask? It's hard to breathe sometimes in them. I yeah. get a little stuffy myself. Do you really? Oh, okay. All right. Get a stent. It'll help. Yeah, get a stent. Right. <laughs> no, but I mean, I was, you know, I, I because I used to do the bike. Marjorie's bike is coming Thursday. Ooh. Or maybe it's tomorrow. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to be on that to, to just try and a, a loose. stationary bike. You mean? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, we have a stationary bike in the house, but it isn't meant to be that way. <laughs> uh, it's a bike she bought, had oh. fixed, and then it just has sat here, not doing anything. So I hope that this thing doesn't have the same fate. Okay. You I have a, one of those in my garage. Do you need a place to hang towels and T-shirts? There yeah. you go. Perfect. <laughs> they got one. Really? Oh, really? Oh, okay. I ride yeah. That yeah. Every day. Do you really? Yeah. Every oh. day, fifteen minutes on that stationary bike. Have you ever gotten out of the room with it? <laughs> I don't want to get out of the room. I'm watching TV while I do it. My friend Shecky has a uh, has a uh, uh, what do you call it a, a treadmill thing, you mm. know? Yeah. And uh, he uh, he used it when he first got it. Yeah. He has. And yeah. He Everybody used, does. He hasn't used. If you want to buy one of those things, the best thing to do is look for them used because you get great deals on them. Yeah. Craigslist or yeah. eBay. Or, really? You, know. you might. Yeah. Be, yeah. So that's probably yeah, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people get everybody rid of them. buys them with best of intentions and, and don't use them. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm getting a little uh, little. And they wind up hanging T-shirts and. Oh, I'm just gonna say that it becomes like a clothesline. I had, I had a solar flex, uh, <laughs> and let me tell you, that's yeah, got a lot of flex of T-shirts. <laughs> Sold it at a garage sale for twenty bucks. I think there I paid go. thousand fifteen hundred dollars, something like that, for it. Wow. Yeah. The biggest work that he had was kind of handing it to the guy. <laughs> the workout, getting it home. When you... Well, I think I'll use this maybe every other day or something because I, you know, I'll do, I did 25 minutes when I went to the gym. And the gym, I passed it today, by the way. I looked in. I go to the same gym as you, Alex. Uh, well, not the same gym I go not to. Not the same gym, but in Woodside. Because if you were going to the yeah. same gym I was going to, I would change gyms. I don't blame you. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna sorry, just get him out of here. No, but I but I looked in the gym and and it I think there was dust all over the place. I mean, it was just uh, nothing going on in there. I may want it, yeah, because now I'm, I'm hopefully gonna, they get it under control because it's gonna be scary going back. All I ever do at the gym is do the bike. So if I, I start using her bike, I may not even pay the. I pay fifteen bucks a month. I know you can't gym. beat that price. You know you can't beat, you can't beat the price, and they do uh, they have pretty good stuff, you know. But yeah, then and I, they're clean too. Then I went over to Marjorie's, however, Marjorie's. Uh, let me turn my mic up a little bit. Marjorie's um, uh, gym, which is uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's a fancy one, really. Did she go to one. Crunch? Because I used to go. To no, crunch not one. Crunch. She used to go to Crunch, but this is uh, that other one, the really fancy one. I, uh, I don't know what the name of it is, but anyway. She went to this one, 
And um, I went and met her one day, and this was like the Taj Mahal. Oh, that's a nice yeah. one. But she pays twenty five hundred dollars a year Ooh. for it. Wow. I mean, they even have little razors for guys, little, yeah. little <laughs> disposable razors, and uh, I mean, it's just it's 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 gorgeous. But is, is the huh? New York Athletic Club still open? They oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. New York, AC. Yeah. yeah, they're still open. Yeah. yeah. That that was I, I went to that in the seventies, and um, that was that was pretty cool. You know, indoor pool, and I don't, I don't know what it compares to now, uh, yeah. but it was the state of the art. Yeah, yeah. Well, I you know, it, uh, I, so anyways, I need to work out because I haven't worked out. I'm just and I was out a, a, out of breath from walking, and I'm going. It's ridiculous, you know, when I was, uh, because I would usually go out and take a walk every day. And the days I didn't walk, I would go to the gym. And if I didn't go to the gym, I, I just wasn't sticking around the house all the time. But now you just don't go out. You know, it's, it's a dangerous world out there. And what's really dangerous are the guys begging in the street. Because they are, they're all coming over to you. They come right up to you, you know, and you've got to dodge them. Uh, hey, because they want some spare yeah, change, and they don't have a mask on, mm. and you know they're just you know they're COVID friendly. Just carry oh, like a four foot blade. You know As they come yeah. near you, you just jab them. What'd you say, Charlie? Lysol. Get away. <laughs> huh? Oh, I thought you said something. That no, was Rob. He he, he uh, suggested you attack them with a just with a little four inch blade. Little As four they come inch blade. Just, <laughs> be, tell your wife that that's four inches. No, no, no. This is. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble is, the other trouble is, is that I, you know, I, uh, um, uh, with, when I you, used to just walk down the street, I'd have my earphones on, but I don't have them on when I'm with girlfriend because she thinks I'm going to uh, ignore her, which I would. Uh, and uh, usually I have the earphones in. So when they ask me for money, I just pretend like I can't hear them. <laughs> you I know, and I'm fine. But, you know, now it's yeah. like. You know, but, but anyway, here here in New York, uh, things have gotten slightly better. We're only down to 337 deaths. I mean, we 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 we're f about six down from what we were yesterday. So uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll go down into the 200s pretty soon. Hopefully, you know, that, as it continues to fall, if it keeps falling every day, you're going to have to open up, and there's going to be you know concerts and things in the park. No, and, there aren't. Oh yeah. Oh well, no, there say are. weeks of downward. Uh... Our, our mayor is n and our mayor and our governor are not going to allow that to happen. They're going to open stuff up. I think what they're going to do is they're going to open up a lot of stuff upstate. Okay, uh, because um, uh, upstate is, he the mayor mentioned this and he's absolutely correct. Upstate is an entirely different population. You know, it's more like the Midwest when it comes to open yeah. expanses and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And he said, so up there, we could probably open up a lot of stuff a lot easier and not have the impact. And, you know, if we see that it's causing problems, we'll then back off. He said, but downstate, uh-uh, it ain't, we, you aren't getting, we're, I'm not asking you to leave the house all too soon. It's what he calls New York pause, that New York, we're on New York pause. And um, sounds like a store for cleaning for dog grooming uh new york pause and we're we're in that pause period he said we may modify the pause upstate but downstate we're going to maintain it in fact we're still going to say stay inside after the 15th you know because you know, we're, because they, well, they're going to start going back non-essential like in queens if you had a guess what was what did you say when do you think like the non-essential is like in Manhattan, Queens, like our area, when do you think they'll start going back? Me and my sister were wondering, like, hmm. I'm wondering, like, they're I not going to tell you, Tony. Not, so. they're, they're not going to tell you, Tony. They're going to let you stay in your house. Uh, just, just like those guys that lived in the caves after World War II and they never told them the war was over. <laughs> well, it isn't going to be over for you, Tony. Well, You're you know, be inside. I'm, I'm not ready, you know, to, to even, would I get in a subway right now? No, not no. a million bucks no. for a million bucks. Even if he said, "Okay, go on the subway." It's a New York pause is over with. Hey, you can go to a movie theater. You wouldn't catch me in a movie theater. No, no you're right. I won't go either. They extended it for another month in the Bay Area. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so I came home at two o'clock today and I slept for a couple of hours, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting uh, house bound now. Uh, you know, I, I can't take it. <laughs> it's, it's been an hour or two. But listen, if I had a small apartment, smaller apartment, I would be going nuts about now. You know, I, and I, and I keep buying stuff. I, I, I bought I, on Amazon. I, I've been buying pants. I've been buying. Uh, I, I bought yeah, this. Yeah. This, this is a laser target that you can practice with. Uh, you know, shooting your uh, dry firing your gun. I, I, you know, I. It's all sorts of stuff. Uh, if I buy any more my stuff, friend, my I, friend Shecky said that somebody's got to take his credit card away from him because he's sitting I think home a lot buying of stuff. Are, yeah, it's yeah. boredom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's boredom buying. Some... And these guys, you know, these advertisers know you're bored. Because do you notice who's advertising now? People who, who make underpants. Oh, yeah. Hello. Can you really? no, uh, yeah, I mean, all kinds of clothing and stuff that you can buy by, uh, by mail, you know, that you don't well, have to go to a store Macy's. to buy. I don't see any ads for Macy's or Bloomingdale's. We yeah. ordered yesterday online for her. We used her old. Uh, we had it, my sister ordered some clothes for her, yeah. and they're shipping it out. Free shipping. Yeah, I just wish somehow there were a way I could get a haircut, you know. But I was I, I wasn't ahead of the curve on this deal. Yeah. If I was, I would have gotten one of those good hair clippers soon. Let's see, what do you look like there, Vernon? Is yours growing out? A Dutch doughboy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Myself. Yeah, Marjorie's hair is going gray. My wife uh, dropped a hint today. She she uh, found the electric shears in a drawer in the bathroom, and she laid them out on the counter for me. Really? Just a little hint. I dropped a little hint. <laughs> yeah, well, she, Marjorie wants to cut my hair. Uh, but I, as I've said it before, um, uh, what, Alex? I, what, what, what? What do you got to lose? Yeah, what have I got to lose? <laughs> yeah, sure. um, uh, uh, I say that women have a Delilah complex. My sister Every woman you. I've ever known has wanted to cut my hair. The only one I let cut my hair was a woman who had been a hair cutter. Oh, you know. Well. And my she, wife did mine on Sunday. Uh, your oh. wife did yours on Sunday? Yeah. Did she, she it looked like she did a good job. She did a great job. It looks no different because it, it's easy. I got the clippers, number two, oh. number five. Yeah. You do number two around here, then you do number five up here, and I take a shower, and it looks like I came out of the barber Where shop. Where do I get those clippers? I got lucky. I ordered them, like, before everybody got locked down. I don't know what made me think of it. I wish I had ordered stock in companies before every, before it went up, but I, no, I got the clippers. I wish I... Look, look at me. Look at me. Look, look back here. It's just... It's horrible. You know, you and then, look, then I did something at- about trying to kind of, like... Maybe we use my clippers to kind of cut it down a little bit, and I cut a big swath in me right here. <laughs> do, you, you know. do you usually, when you get a haircut, is it uh, totally um, smooth? Or? I get it cut all the way down. I get it down to a number one. I look like Charlie Brown for a couple of weeks, you know. Oh. Uh, and then and I, and I go to them whenever it gets, when it gets like, well, uh, less than this. Uh, I, I'm down to the barber shop, you know, and this, these are these local, you know, Harlem barbers who uh, uh, sit around telling stories to each other and uh, uh, and, and cutting hair. And it, they say, which one do you want? And they point to a, a, a poster they have, and it has like one, two, three, four, all the different hairstyles and shapes. And then I say, well, uh, give me just... Shave it off. Just do a number one. And then he does a number one, and I'm out of there. Yeah, it's easy to do. Anybody could do your hair a number one. Yeah. To begin with, they feel so guilty about what they... They get 12 bucks, and I give them 15. They feel so guilty about it because it's not much work to do me at all that they do things like cut the nose hairs, <laughs> you know, say, why don't yeah. you trim up the beard a little bit for you, you know. You know, my favorite thing about going to a park... Hairs. Is, yeah. is getting a hot towel shave. You know, uh, the traditional barbers, they, they put the hot towel on. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, you know, they've got the, uh, the foam that comes out of the and thing. Then and then a gangster comes, comes in and shoots you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> with uh, Albert Anastasia. Uh, actually, I, uh, my father took me to the uh, barber shop that he got shot in. But uh, he, my father worked for him for a short period of time. But, um, for Anastasia? Uh, 
and Albert Einstein. Yeah. yeah. He gave me my first bicycle. It was bigger than me when I was a little kid. Really? Albert Anastasia gave you a bicycle? No wonder you turned out the way you turned out. And I set the watch he gave my father. Uh, anyway, uh, what, the, uh, what the deal is, is those hot towel shaves are just the, the best thing that a I guy know, can I know. Get. I've had them upon occasion. Yeah. You feel like your whole pool is open up when they do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but still, what, what, it's still it's just a shave. The next day, you've got stubble again. Yeah, but it feels good when they're doing it. You right? know, if it was like a Brazilian or something where it went away for a while, that would be okay. But it's not. Yeah. Why didn't they ever come up with a Brazilian for the face? That's what I. Mean. Mm. The That's hair so, is dense there, boy. That would hurt. Well, that would hurt. A wax job. Yeah. I yeah. I, so I came home today. I showered. You know. Uh, and uh, I, you know, because I'm paranoid about all of this, I'm probably t oh, being over precautious. Yeah, mm. but uh, but the you know the the curve's going down, and uh, it, it's a matter of people just keeping their their foot on the on the pedal. You know, uh, Cuomo is being attacked for uh, doing something with the assisted living homes, and that caused uh, additional deaths. Are, are you familiar with that or know no, anything about it? No, I, I don't hear about that. He has kind of uh, today, I mean, he did something which hmm. our, our glorious leader would never do. He said, you know, I was late to the party. He said, I should have closed down everything about a week earlier than I did. You know, but I was, I was listening to the experts, and the experts were all wrong. And uh, finally, when I saw there was a problem, then I did something about it. But I was late to the party, too. And he admitted his own failings, you know, which is so refreshing. You know. Did you see 60 Minutes? Uh, when? Last, this week? Yeah. Uh, yeah. About that Blue Dot company? Uh, yeah. yeah. And all the tracing that they were doing beforehand? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, they knew quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a, quite a bit ahead of time. And then, and then Washington Post put out that, uh, that article this morning that should be uh, interesting uh, what they're uh, going to come up with about how much that uh, Trump actually knew in his uh, well, daily it, briefs. Well, they, they came the, uh, the it's come out that the, you know, every day he gets briefed by is it, yeah. the military uh, and uh, he gets well, a, he, he gets a book every day. Uh, you know, with yeah. The, and if you if you've been listening to the military, they've been doing social distancing training since early January. Yeah. yeah. And they were warning him in these in these in these briefing in the briefing book uh, uh, that you know all of this was going to be a problem. And they yeah, say you need to pay attention. they say that once a week they actually had to go in and read it to him because he wouldn't he won't do anything unless somebody reads it to him. He won't pay attention oh. to it. Really? Uh, he has to have it read to him. Yeah. Now it's not that he can't read, he's just a lazy fuck. Yeah, he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do it. And and uh, they warned him about this in January, and yeah. he he just completely avoided believing it. Okay, almost daily. It, it, not almost daily. Yeah. Uh, some days they said it was more vociferous than other days, but they didn't go in every day to read it to him either. They only went in a couple of days a week to read it right. to him. Initially, uh, he thought, and I think he was right, that they were giving him uh, uh, information that was off the mark, and he didn't trust uh, the people that were disseminating the information. And I think some of those people turned out to be very uh, untrustworthy. Why were they untrustworthy? Uh, they were giving him a bent on the, uh, on the information that wasn't accurate. Uh, trying to make them screw up. Yeah, but he whole turned group out the of people that, that you're supposed to depend on for that information. And oh. it turned out, it turned out that they were right on this. Well, you know, well, I mean, who is who is Donald Trump to decide that these people aren't valid when uh, he's just come into office? You know, he doesn't he doesn't know these people from hell. You know, and I, I think that 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 if you have the military come into you and say, look, this is a real threat. This thing in this thing in China isn't as e as uh, isn't as uh, easy as the Chinese make it out to be. That's exactly what they were telling him, and that you better be prepared for this sort of thing. And he wasn't prepared for it. 
Consequently, we look at the map and we got over 55,000 people dead in this country. And I think the murderer is Donald Trump. Yeah, I'm glad you think that. Yeah. Uh, Vernon, how do you feel about it? I think that uh, there could have been earlier warnings done. There could have been a whole lot of things done sooner. There could have been testing, supplies, and uh, swabs. The uh, Defense Production Act could have been taken, uh, uh, executed much sooner. Um, but, but you know, that would be taking responsibility, which Trump never does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, what I thought was refreshing today was when Cuomo actually fessed up to the fact that he felt he was late to the party, that he, he could have been a little earlier on this, but that he was relying on what he was hearing from the CDC, what he was hearing from various sources around that, uh, you know, that there wasn't, and, and of course the White House, that there wasn't anything to worry about. And then yeah, when he started seeing information, what, what, what did you say, what did what, you say, CEO? Kevin? I said, I saw that too. And I thought, wow, he's stepping up, you know? Well, I mean, he admits his, his mistakes, you know, and, um, uh, he, but he certainly has made up for it. I think he's been very good in being proactive in this uh, situation. I mean, he closed everything is, down tighter than a, a, what's my father's own. Has anybody own one. Um, looked at the Netflix documentary Pandemic? Not yet. Uh, uh, yes, good? yes. We're living it. Oh it's no, no, pretty, I didn't know. I, well, didn't, yeah, I didn't see it, that. This was this was. I think it was done before this, wasn't it? It was done before this pandemic started, right? Don't know. I'm pretty sure it was, but it's uh, it's eye opening. Yeah, and it refers back. Uh, I'm only on like the third episode, I think, but it refers back to H1N1, which was in two, 2009. Yeah. That was a the swine flu. It, it refers to all these other um, strains of flu, and it it's an eye opener because I went through H1N1 and how it kind of started in Mexico and how it started to spread. Yeah. And it wasn't quite as bad, but you can see that the action taken so fast nailed it. Yeah. And it and it yeah. it went up through the United States and kind of just died out as it went through towards Europe and that sort of thing. But well, so, what they're saying, yeah. you know, they haven't gotten to this one yet. I don't know if they ever do, but they were, you know, looking at Ebola and how Ebola Mm -hmm. uh, started down in the Africa. western part of Africa, and mm -hmm. only one guy came to Dallas, and one went to Europe, I believe. But most of it was contained down there. And, and the way that it spread, it spread was was interesting. And in, in how in 2009 it started to spread, and it could have gotten really ugly, but it was nailed. And I remember when I went through that with my company. Like I said before, I was one of the assistant, what they called the I think they called it the uh, pandemic officer, and there was another guy at the plant that was the pandemic officer of the plant. We had all these protocols that we had to follow, yeah. not letting people in and checking them out for shots and all that crap. I thought it was crazy at the time, but everybody was doing that, and I think that helps. You know, they, they jumped on it right away, and it was going on across the country. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering if that helped mm -hmm. slow that whole thing down and who was in, you know— in the office at that time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I was going to ask you too, Alex. Yeah. I was thinking about this. I mean, it may sound crazy, but like I was looking at it from our perspective, even when I was working in the warehouse, I mm -hmm. would say, I was telling Jackie and you, I would say about 75% of the goods was imported from China. I'm not trying to blame China or anything, but I was thinking about it like when they used to get the deliveries off the boat and they would deliver it privately to the warehouse, those boxes were filthy. That's all hell. I remember my, my hands were black for getting with the cardboard. It was like four or 500 boxes. Here's the question now that I pose. My sister said, would you ever go back to work? I mean, I wouldn't work there anyway. Like, would you ever go back to a place? Like, say if they laid me off. I wouldn't even want to go back there because here's the question now. Say if you're a worker and it's a non-union shop and you go back and you get sick out of work now, can you sue your company now if they're not taking precautions? I don't That's know. That's a big question. That's a big question. You know, yes, uh, Vernon. Have you guys heard the stories about the prisons that are getting uh, really, really hit hard with the COVID? There's one in Marion, Ohio, where yep. there's 2,500 inmates and 2,000 wow. of the inmates 
tested positive for coronavirus. Well, last that's week. what you I get think that's for the one not. Josh to, lives next to or near. That's what you. Yeah. That's what you get for not uh, not uh, uh, observing <laughs> social distancing. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, well, how, how are you? On gonna... a positive note, though, the the governor here in Kentucky, uh, following up on releasing 800 uh, inmates who, you know, were uh, medically vulnerable or uh, sentenced to nonviolent or non-sexual crimes, yeah. were released on April the 2nd. And he followed up today and commuted 352 more inmates <laughs> deemed particularly vulnerable to the COVID. Um, Charlie? Yeah, I think in the prison that uh, Vernon was talking about, of those people that tested positive, something like 80% of them had no symptoms. Wow, he's systematic, wow. 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 I'm curious. You know what? I hope we get that. They keep saying, yeah. I hope we can't go to the drugstore and get the test. Even though I don't have any symptoms, I'm going to take it anyway. You are? See if, if they, they ever do that, yeah. If they ever do, they yeah. Do. Well, can you, well can you test positive? I mean, can you test positive for the COVID and not have any symptoms yeah. at all? I mean, sure. even, yes. at, even sure. at my age? You know, they think most people they have it with no symptoms. Yes. I mean, On that note, my mother uh, finally got her test, and she tested negative today. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah, yeah. We don't have tests in, in in Texas. No. You cannot get Texas tests unless you have had a fever for five fucking days. Jesus. Yeah. It's, that, not, you know, it's time for you to get. It's, time, it's, it's time for you to get a new yeah. government down there, man. Oh man, and I mean, that's what bugs me about Trump be because at that point, what Trump will say to everybody, "If you want a test, you can yeah. get a test." Yeah. Come on. I want one. Well, you know, he he, he puts yeah. everything yeah. off on the governors, and the reason he does that, he wow. then is passing the liability for this entire situation off to somebody else who we can blame it on. States' rights. Well, and my mother was exposed, and it took her a week, and she's in a retirement home. It took her a week. <laughs> wow. Wow. Has anybody Bullshit. else in the retirement home gotten uh, They. She COVID? thinks two of them did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are they well, okay? Are they okay? I believe so. They won't, you know, they won't say anything because of HIPAA. Yeah. Because I wonder if, if um, uh, you know, if let's say I found out I tested positive. Would that necessarily mean I get a bad case of it because I'm 80 years old? Or does that mean I'm, you know, I could just get it and sniffle a little yeah, bit? Yeah, well, the <laughs> person that they think, you know, the person that she was exposed by mm -hmm. is supposedly doing okay. That's all they would tell How come we have three million cases of this and we don't know that much about the virus itself yet? Uh, you would watch. think that would be enough, like a larger sample. Well, here's, here, here's, 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 they can't get a handle on it. That's where you watch that pandemic thing, because there's yeah. so many different strains of these flus, it's ridiculous. Well, here's the latest wrinkle on this, is that they've, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, young people who have been considered to be, you know, pretty much uh, not on the on the map when it comes to having any serious problems with the COVID, it turns out now that if people in their 30s and 40s are coming down with strokes. Yeah. Large amount. Right? I mean, yes, more strokes yeah. than usually in that population. Blood clotting. You know, people, wow. kids who are guys who are in their uh, like 30 years old getting a stroke. That that now that they're this, saying skin lesions and things like that too. Yeah, I mean this. You mean you could get it from a skin lesion? No, you. No, you're gives you yeah, That's one of the symptoms. Oh. Develop a scan lesion. Oh. You see, I mean, it, 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 this seems to be a disease that has many little twists and turns to it. You know, it's so, not. And just... that's what the, this one, this one doctor or the scientist is trying to attack this particular uh, virus or these these different strains of flu by not going after the. The, the flu strains itself they're studying that mm -hmm. but they're also he's also going after strengthening the immune system instead and trying to get a vaccine to strengthen the immune system so it can attack anything that comes after it so he's going a different direction this bio bio was a bio direction yeah. uh i forgot the name of the company but he's he's doing a kind of a, a reverse kind of technology and trying to strengthen the immune system mm -hmm. 
by attacking back at these flu strains rather than trying to just make a flu strain to attack, you know, like they're doing now, making the strain, injecting you with that, and then your body, immu- you know, builds the immu- right. immune... Right, the immunes, antibodies, yeah. You know, yeah. Antibodies. But it's it's he's he's trying to do a, a universal, a universal vaccine that will cause your body to just tell everything to screw off. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Wow. Uh, wait a minute, Jeff's calling. Let's uh, get Jeff in here. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. How are you this evening, Jeff? Good. A little late, but yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, okay. Brian Brian Neary isn't here tonight either, so I don't know where he is. He's been calling us a lot, so I'm I'm spoiled, you know. Mm. Uh, but uh, people do have I lives. Think you have a lot more than fifty-eight thousand deaths, too. Uh, I wrote you. Brian's not calling in tonight. Oh, he just isn't. He ca- let you know he isn't. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, Charlie, hey, we passed hey, Vietnam, hey, didn't we? You know, yeah, we passed saying. Vietnam, but I mean, I think we've had. I, we probably had over a hundred thousand deaths. There's a lot of people that died that didn't ever get tested. Well, and no, they're, think about it, like, there are a lot Vietnam of, lasts in what ten years? This is what yeah. three months. Yeah. There are a lot of people That's also. There are also a lot of people who died at home. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're right. Like Two hundred deaths March first. And well, how many of the deaths months. in? We, How we many of the it. deaths in nursing homes haven't been counted? Yeah, that's true. It was called a wildfire. Yeah. yeah. This well, number's a, it's yeah. actually over 100,000. Yeah, well. We probably had over 2 million cases. What I'm going to do oh. is still go with the, uh, with the you know, the current statistics. All right? Well, that's, those are confirmed. Yeah, those are confirmed, and those we can we can count on. It's still terrible. Um they, they, I think it was Fauci who said this could be upwards of a hundred thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, so we could reach that hundred thousand. I don't know if we will unless there's a big breakout in the Midwest. I think a lot of those cities that are loosening up are going to see a problem. I think that what about Georgia, Georgia, I think is going to become so infected it's ridiculous. You know? Did you know? Uh, did you We're s- already losing 2,000 people a day. Yeah. You know what scares me, though, with this whole thing? And this is what's oh, really scaring me. Get to your film Let's say second. the numbers go down because we're all in the house. Yeah. But they don't have a handle on it. We're not, any, so many people are not even tested. Once we start going back to work, it mm-hmm. just how is it going to go down? It's just going to go back up again. Yeah. Well, I mean, here we look at somebody. Let's look mm-hmm. at a country like Sweden, however. That has taken absolutely no, um, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? God, I'm so out of it today. No strategy. Uh, <laughs> guidelines. Uh, they, they decided that they weren't going to put people, tell people not to go to work and to social distance and all of that. They said, forget it. Uh, we're just going to let this thing burn itself out. And they, uh, their, their amount of deaths are no more than any other country per capita, even though, even though they've eliminated social distancing and people are going to work and stores are open and so on. And my argument is it's a different country. You know, we just don't know what happens with that. You, you had they your hand up, Phil. socialized medicine, too. Yeah. Phil, you had your hand up? Uh. Uh, let's see. It's still muted. No, it's not. No, we no, can hear up. We can hear. No, uh, I, I don't remember what it was. Uh, it was a couple minutes ago. Oh, the, but it must uh, not. Have, it, it must not well, have been that it important. Pertinent, it was pertinent at the time. <laughs> okay. Sweden's only had like nineteen thousand cases, so they didn't have to social distance. They didn't have to lock down. Well, if we uh, only had 19,000 cases, we wouldn't have to either. It, it could I, be. We got that in Brooklyn and Queens. It was. I saw a news segment tonight uh, about a woman in New York crying that uh, the uh, either her husband or was well, someone had died of the virus, and the city has not picked up the body yet. The coroner's office it hasn't picked up the body, and this is quite common, I believe, uh, going on in New York right well, now. This that happened. This, hap- this, this happened. Not this happened up. next door. It was m- pretty much a whole day before they came and picked up the body. Yeah. Uh, when I went, uh, I first saw the cops here at like nine o'clock in the morning, 
They were still out there at 10 o'clock at night, and when I went on the air here, they haven't, hadn't picked up the body I yet. I guess this wow. is quite common. I saw it on the news, and I don't know if it's every station that carries well, it. Well, I mean, she could gripe about that, but it seems logical because uh, the uh, funeral homes and so on are being overtaxed by this. You know? Yeah. Well, it, it, she says it's been days, and the body is still in the apartment. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Well, you know, I mean, this is what's happening. Uh, you know, this is a this is a this is a big tragedy. We've got you have no idea how bad it is here in New York. I mean, it it's really bad. Uh, Alex, when I go to the store, but isn't it a health hazard to have a dead body in the house for days? Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, eventually you can use it for mulch, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I, I think you want to get you want to get the body out of there as soon as possible, uh, but I don't think it presents any unless she died of some. Well, even if she died of a disease, I don't know if it could spread the disease that much. You know, uh, didn't uh, the Black Plague the uh, disease spread from uh, dead, dead bodies? Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that was rats. It was rats. Mm -hmm. That's that's how they got it, but uh, yeah, not a rat's got it from dead bodies. Yeah, but it was oh. rats, though. You know what they found out? What the story is now is, and Cuomo mentioned this today. He said, you know, there's a common misconception that the way the coronavirus got here was by people getting on boarding planes and going to the West Coast. He said and that's wrong. He said the, f the first case of somebody coming into this country with a coronavirus, we kind of can, tra can trace to the East Coast. He said they were, it was somebody from China, got on a plane, went to like London or Paris or someplace like that, and then took a plane to New York City. I thought the first person that died of it was in, no, in died of it. where he was died of it. They, but they say they've been doing some tracing now of, of yeah. the virus and where it went and how it went and what made it to go the way that it did and uh, they say that the the first case came from the uh, came from the uh, east coast uh, came to the east coast the problem is that trump makes a big deal about how he closed down china and what all that did was it's like a balloon you know you push one end of the balloon the air's got to go somewhere so, okay, I can't get on a plane and go to uh, America that way. I'll go to London and then on to New York. How much later was it till he closed down uh, Europe and then London? Oh, it wasn't, wasn't until March. March, maybe oh, late March. Yep. Uh, what, what day did he... Uh, it was March 31st? That, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that he closed down China. Uh, oh, not March 31st. No, that was like January. No, he, oh. he closed that down in January. <laughs> First. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think he was doing it because of the COVID. I mean, it was not a a, a prudent move because, you know, it's, you're acting like Chinese have nowhere else to go but to the West Coast. You know, this is <laughs> ridiculous. It's, it's a, number of, a number of advisors, including Fauci <laughs> and we still come. <laughs> are saying that closing down China at that time was a smart move. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, uh, it, well, it, let me put it this way. Wasn't a stupid move, stupid. considering that he's considering pretty. Considering that he. Oh, oh, John, turn your audio off. Hi. We're it is off. Well, it was coming back at us here. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Hello? There you are, John. Then I can't hear you guys. Can you can you hear us? Uh, he he's mistaking the uh, Skype for the audio, uh, not the uh, uh, the. Safari or the, what is it? The um, YouTube. Turn down the YouTube audio. Well, no, that wasn't what was coming back at me. But is it? It's fine now. Can you hear us, John? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I think that uh, uh, the, you know the president refuses to take any responsibility for not doing this fast enough. You know, and I. I really appreciate it when I hear a guy like Cuomo say, hey, I didn't do enough soon enough, you know, and you go, okay, you know, I understand. We, I, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. But when you deny, 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 and, and the, you know, the, the, the army is saying every day we were telling him, you know, the military was saying, we're, uh, you know, this is a real threat. You better do something about it. And he didn't do anything about it because he didn't want to read the book. 
you know, so. Yes, Vernon. I was glad to hear that they uh, reinstated or they plan to reinstate the captain of the USS Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, all he did was try and save the, the lives of his men, you know, and, and uh, I, th I think he did a very brave thing. And, he, and by the way, that letter he wrote, I think, got out not by him, but by somebody else. He had written, just written that letter to his, um, to his superiors. And somehow that letter got out, and they, they, I, they've never explained how. But yet he had to, you know, because he, you know, because he wrote it, he had to take uh, blame for it. So, you know. Um, they, uh, wait a minute, I have one other story here pertinent to the coronavirus that I wanted to bring up. Um, oh, no, I, no here's, here it is. Ted Cruz wants to propose a law. Are you ready for this? Banning the Chinese from airing propaganda on Mexican and Canadian border stations aimed at America. You think that's a good idea, Phil? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, you know, how do you? How do you? How do you they're they're going to they're going to uh, use propaganda. They've been using it, uh, and uh, you know they blame the U.S. military for starting the virus. Uh, they're not, uh, they're not someone that we can trust, you know, even, uh, yeah, but, you know, but the FCC has no, it says here has no jurisdiction over stations licensed to Mexico or Canada. Oh, yeah, what are they going to do? Put them in jail, but Didn't can issue licenses for entities broadcasting over those stations from studios on the U S side of the border. Now you were wanted by the Vietnamese uh, for uh, doing the exact same thing from Hollywood broadcasting over to Vietnam, and uh, no. you were on the propaganda list, no. weren't you? No, I was. It was China. Oh, China. You? Oh, okay. So China. I, 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 I was on a. Uh, I was on a list of uh, of enemies of of the people, and that if they ever catch me, they can arrest me, and you know. Oh, is that why you kind of try to fit in with that Chinese communist? Yeah, pack? that's why I did that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like them. <laughs> no, it was just that anybody, anybody who was on Armed Forces Radio, because we broadcast to the entire Asian area, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they just wrote your name down, put a little book, and said, you know, uh, Alex Bennett, we got, we're going to get him. You know. Well, you know, and uh, they... In the 50s and 60s, didn't they have these uh, uh, radio stations that were in Mexico and they were broadcasting here? They were playing rock well, and roll. Well, these are those radio stations, only the Chinese have bought them. Ah. Now, uh, one of them is Rosarita Radio, uh, R R Rosarita BCN, um, mm -hmm. XEWW, <laughs> which reaches San Diego and parts Did of Los see? Angeles. What was the one that used to uh, used to go all the way in California? We used to listen to it. The kids, uh, you know, in fact, in the movie American Graffiti, that's the radio right. station the kids were listening really? to. It was a Wolf Mexican Man radio Jack. station. Yeah. Huh? Wolfgang Wolf Jack. Wolf Jack. Wolf Jack? I don't think he was on. He wasn't on that, but, right. you know. He just played the character that was the disc <laughs> jockey. Yeah. Yeah. And it turned out he was broadcasting, I think, from Modesto. Haven't yeah. the Chinese people figured out that nobody listens to radio anymore, and it was a bad investment? <laughs> well, uh, you know, um, uh, let me see here. Um, Are they going to be iHeart stations soon? The legislation does not address the Russian government's <laughs> ties to much. Sputnik News Agency, the English-language radio programs which air on stations in Washington and Kansas City. Nor does it address Russian government-funded RT America, a news channel, carried by cable systems in the U.S. and characterized by the Department of Justice as a foreign agent and by the U.S. intelligence community as a propaganda outlet. Uh, it seems that Cruz can't be concerned with that. You know. Didn't Al Gore, uh, uh, in one way or another, uh, create RT because he sold his... Uh, uh, his 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 liberal left wing station. Well, he or, bought. He had a camera. What what yeah, the station was? I'm trying to remember. Al Jazeera, though. Air America. Air, it no, it wasn't Air, Air America. Al it wasn't Air America. It was. And it was a cable. It was a cable TV channel, and he sold it to Al Jazeera. TV. And it only lasted like three years or something, yeah. where they were broadcasting Al Jazeera America. Yeah. So what did RT buy? Well, no, I'm trying to think of. Um, Isn't that Russian? 
Yeah. That's yeah. Russian TV. That's what RT, RT, I think, bought. Maybe they bought Al Jazeera, or they bought somebody. Oh, bought. Yeah, I think. Did. I think Al, uh, Al Gore owns something, and I can't remember what he owned. Like one. It was American current, uh, current TV. Current TV. Current TV. That was it, and it was very current good, TV. by the way. I really enjoyed it. It was videos really made by people, and that they they had them on there. I think I enjoyed it very much, but it didn't make money, and so um, Al. I think Al Jazeera came along and bought it from. Him. Now, I'm just trying to figure out where RT came from, and I don't think it came from Al Gore or any of Al Gore's investments being divested. No, it came from Russia. Well, well I know yeah. it came from Russia, but we're trying to figure out where did they get the, uh, you know, the, the satellite really uh, time and the studios in New York and all of that. You know, that's RT of was thing. already around when Current TV was on. It, were they already around? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. So, you know. Nothing like propaganda. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, what do you think about your boy, uh, Phil, uh, not holding, stopping holding his press conferences? Uh, you know, if there was a way that I could write him and tell him that he should change up his press conferences, do them from the Oval Office, and only take written questions uh, that he, he answers, I think he'd do a much better job. So let the press put on an index card uh, their question. He can look at the questions, the ones he thinks are fake news, they can set them aside, and he can do what it is that he has to do, and then let the other ones... Uh, Isn't that you kind of, think that's a good thing? Won't work. It's a good you thing. You can't read. It's a good thing hmm. for him, but is it a good... I mean, that's, that's, that's censoring the press. Yep. Only no, answer the questions you want to answer... Come on. Well, I've been I've been watching him lately, and he does censor the press, Rob, because he does censor the press. Because when the press asks him a question, he doesn't like the question. He immediately says, "You know, you deal in nothing but fake news, and you're a fake news person. And you, what what's your question?" And he just shuts them down. But at least we get to see that. The other way, it goes all smooth, and it's I know it's is not good for the country to have that happen. Whether he's right or not, oh, uh, and I think he, he should stop. Well, uh, that's why I think he should go into the Oval Office, do his uh, presentation. And uh, nobody should cover it. Well, no. Except Fox News, of course. Well, it doesn't matter. It, you know, if your question gets asked and answered, then you cover it. You know. Well, what I'm saying is I don't know that that, uh, that isn't what I would tell him. I'd tell him a couple of things. Number one, let's say Dr. Fauci is now getting up to speak. Don't stand there like a kid who doesn't who stand being forced to stand in place and can't stand still. It's the same thing he did to Hillary during the debate. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What you do, what you do is I would tell him the first thing you do when somebody else gets up to speak, you sit down. Move away. Yeah. You sit down. And let that person have the stage and don't stand off to the side waddling back and forth. It yeah, looks terrible. It covers. It looks it's bizarre. Yeah. Does he have a chair? Nobody has chairs. No, but I would give him one. The throne was in the shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't think, yeah, like you said, no, nobody has chairs, so, you know, that's what he does. Yeah, but and I mean. But he's got it, nervous energy. It's called spookus. Yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 it's almost like he doesn't want to be there, you know, but he's there because he doesn't have his, uh, his rallies right now, and he figures this is a way of getting his uh, propaganda across, and he's done a bad job of it. He, he has blown it completely. And there are people now in his administration who are saying, do not, whatever you do, do not hold these things anymore. You know, you're just blowing them. You're not good at them. You're, you're saying stuff off script. You're not careful what you say. And he's, lately he's been on his kind of almost best behavior, the last couple ones. Uh, but every now and then he can't help himself and he goes and slams Nancy Pelosi or something, you know. Um, but um, uh, so, uh, how is uh, 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 John? How you doing where you are in the lovely tenderloin of San Francisco? I'm okay. Um, you know, I'm getting out once I get up in the morning, get a cup of coffee, go for a little walk. It was nice today, but mm -hmm. still a lot of people on the streets. Not, not, um, you know, not uh, keeping social distance or wearing masks. But, um, they were wearing masks. 
They're not. They're not, not. Very much, not, not really. Well, you know what you have in San Francisco that I think is a big danger is you have these entitled assholes that came up from Silicon Valley who really don't have any sense of community and just think they're so damn entitled. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest health danger you've got. Yeah. It, it, you don't have those in New York? No, not to the extent that they have them in San Francisco. I'll tell uh, you that. New Yorkers, i got to tell you, Phil, New Yorkers are amazing. You know, this thing came along, and, uh, you know, your natural inclination is, oh, well, New Yorkers are to say, fuck you. You know, no. They, they, they have played, they've gotten into the program, and they have done their p a bit, because they realize, they, they, and the governor reminds them constantly, that, you know, other people's lives are in your hands, okay? Well, that and That's it's because hmm? the 15 or 17,000 that died were the ones that weren't social distancing. And so they... Uh, no, they're they're people who died for the most part before they knew this yeah. thing was coming on strong. I, yeah. You know, but, I mean, yeah. I'm just lucky that I'm not a terribly social person. And I didn't go out and meet with, see with a lot of people and hang out in crowds and things like that. You know, if I were younger, I might have. But at my age, I kind of stay at home and don't do much of anything, and I'm pretty glad of that. Have the subway, and once they realize that you can't pack people in like they do on the subway, and that, and, and you, and you don't drive around New York. I mean, if you drive around New York, you can't park. So they, they in essence, were able to shut things down because the the subway shut down. Well, isn't it? the subway isn't shut down. No. Well, it, it's shut down. Uh, no. because no. people aren't no. using it. It's being no, it's, it's running. It's running. If people don't run. get on it, then they run no. empty or they run. Actually, what's happening is it turns out that all the all the homeless have mm -hmm. suddenly used the subway trains as shelters. <laughs> and that's causing a problem because we think that uh, there's gonna be a lot of disease coming out of that. Uh, yeah. and uh, so I mean, who wants to go down to the uh, uh, down to the subway and have to put up with that. Where's you know? Bernard Getz when you need him? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I I don't know. Uh, you know, we you, you wouldn't you wouldn't go on a subway, would you? Would you, uh, Tony? No, if I go to visit Czechia, I tell him I'm going to take an Uber. I will not go on a subway right now. Go oh, well, and you don't know the Uber isn't. You know. I know the Uber. I have my mask and gloves on though too. Yeah. You know, and I've but only, I still feel safer in a taxi though. I've only been in an Uber a couple of times, and. Uh, you know, I found them to be clean, that uh, drivers were really courteous. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be yeah, surprised yeah. if uh, these guys wipe out or uh, uh, use Phil, yeah, uh, some Phil, sort of cleanser. Phil, still, you're using a public form of transportation in yeah, which some right. guy just got out of there and you're getting in. And you yeah. don't know what he has left behind. And maybe that driver hasn't had time between that person and you to clean it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, would, I would wear my rubber gloves and mask, and then I have a, I would have my cream on me too, like my, the Purell when yeah. I got out. Uh, 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 yes, uh, Vernon. Vernon. Vernon, are you there? Uh, I don't know if he can hear you. Frozen. Can you Isn't hear us, Vernon? Isn't it scary how we got a live? Vernon, can you hear us? Uh, oh, you're breaking up on. First, us. The first. I hear you. Yeah, but you're 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 breaking up like crazy. Hold on, I see if something came loose. Uh, that. No, it's it has something to do that's with your better. you know has some internet do, connection has to do with your internet connection. Okay, is that any better? Yeah, it's uh, okay. It's bit. better than it was. Yeah. You know, are you are you using are you using a notebook or what? Oh, okay. Anyway, yeah. I, I'm in Kentucky, you know. They still use dial-up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm using a tablet. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm using a tablet. You might just point it in a different direction or something, you know. That would, might help you. Hello, testing, one, two, three. That's better. It's better. Okay. Yeah, it's better. You hear me now? Yeah. Anyway, what were you going to say? Uh, you were t talking about the death rate in New York City, mm -hmm. and according to some t statistics I just looked up, 192,000 confirmed cases, but only 17,000 deaths. That's less than 1%. Is that less than 1%? 
No, that's yeah. ten percent. No, ten percent would be twenty nine thousand deaths. Right. Yeah. Well, ten, so it's it, not one percent. Two thousand would be one percent. One hundred ninety two thousand cases. Okay. That would be okay. I'm, yeah, I'm wrong. That, that's probably closer to five percent, like you were God, saying. I'm glad you guys weren't working on the moonshot. Yeah, that, <laughs> if it was 100, oh, shit, we're gonna crash. Hey, let me get out my, let me get out my slide rule. <laughs> How do you know where my chair? Phil's got his shoes off counting. <laughs> Whatever it is, we've had, uh, uh, let me see here. What is it? How many deaths have we had? How many have we had here in New York City again? Uh, pity, pity, pity. Here's the that U.S., is. here's the New York. Uh, uh, 17,682 out of uh, 1 million. Oh, no, this that's the United States. I don't know how many in New York State. Uh, okay, that's oh. New York State. 292 and 17,000 is New York State. Oh. New York City is 162,000 confirmed, 12,000 dead. Mm -hmm. And you know what they're not taking that's into about account 10%. now? What, what about what, the yeah. after the after the people who survive? Who knows how their life's going to be after this? The after effects. Just under seven and a half percent. The New York City oh. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, twelve thousand deaths uh, and uh, no, seventeen thousand deaths. That's, oh, that's, oh, that's, that's, oh, that's New York State. Excuse State. me. You're right. <clears throat> you, no, yes. no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. No, it says oh. New York City. How yeah. Many? Oh, seventeen thousand in New York City. Six hundred and eighty-two. Yeah. Uh, and this is serious. Come on. Seventeen six eighty two divided by and how many cases in New York City? How, how many cases? That uh, might that, be the metro area, Alex. Uh, yeah. That might be the metro area because you know you got surrounding counties. Well, the majority of the cases in New York State have been down here. Okay. Uh, and we're talking about we're talking about Queens, we're talking about Staten Island, Staten Island, you know, the Bronx. So how many infected in, in New York City or or the Bay or the New York? Well, that area? I don't I don't have that figure on this little map of mine. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I could probably have it on this other map. But if you take the seventeen thousand, you divide it by uh, the uh, yeah, number of cases. Let number me see of here. cases that gives you the percentage. Okay, number of hospitalized is forty thousand five hundred seventeen cases. One hundred fifty seven thousand seven hundred thirteen. That's in the New York City area. Okay, so that's uh, eleven point two percent. That's a pretty high death rate. Remember, he was making fun of. Oh, it's just gonna be like the flu. Yeah, the yeah. flu's under one percent. Yeah, it's just gonna be like a bad cold. Well, in other areas of the country, it is lower, isn't it? Like California, uh, I think it's uh, yes. quite a bit. Yeah, but uh, again, you know, we we don't have. They don't have the density of population we have here. There's nowhere in California that the population gets this dense. Ask John about what happens every time he walks over the sidewalk. You know, yeah, uh, but, uh, you know, he's, he's he's in a certain part of town, right, John? You know, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, San Francisco is empty, except in, like, you know, in my neighborhood where, the, you know, where there are a lot of homeless and drug addicts. But for the most part, it's you don't see people anywhere. Right, mm. right. So it's a hey, but did, did you hear about those two uh, those two dubious uh, doctors down in Bakersfield? They're, they're, they they were all over Fox News saying, "Oh, we did these tests, and you know we've determined that uh, that this uh, you know that this isn't any more dangerous than the common flu." And yeah. I don't know. They, they, they were they came up with Joe. these bogus statistics. You see these crap. No, yeah, come up with any statistics. That's why they were being challenged. Yeah. There, there, there was no, uh, in, in, there was no testing. There was no statistics. Well, it was good enough for Fox News, though. It was Fox yeah. that challenged them. No, Fox. Well, Laura Ingram, 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 that's why they're in Bakersfield. No, I heard Laura Ingram charge uh, challenge those two guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she didn't challenge them. She put them on TV. Yeah, and then she asked them, "Where's, where's your facts?" Okay. Well, anyway, anyway, the theme's playing. We gotta go. Uh, this okay. is, yeah. you know, we, 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 and, Pence didn't and we and and Jeff plan. hasn't said a word tonight. Hi, Jeff. Hi. I was gonna talk about the vice president. But... Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. No why don't you? Well, was, no, uh, yeah. No. No mask, mask Pence. You should have been thrown out. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, what is wrong? Everybody's standing around with masks right? except him, and he's the head of our coronavirus task force. Yeah, I'm gonna sure. come. He was tested. He's, 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 no, it doesn't matter if he's tested, Phil. It's, 
Ask Bill, it, it, it's you know, a matter of door. setting an example. So what if he was tested? So are all those other people probably in that room. Ask. Phil, just because you were tested yesterday doesn't mean you don't have it today. That's why right. you wear a mask, because you care about other people. Exactly. Yes. Okay, hey, listen, I got to go. Uh, Rob, thank you. Phil, thank you. Vernon, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Uh, 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 uh. Tony. Tony. Thank you, Kevin. I care Kevin. about you, Phil. I care about you, Phil. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, okay. John. And thank you to me. Thank you all. Uh, why don't you uh, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wave, big wave goodbye back to you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the citizens' panel for tonight. They've done their duty to God and their country, and I appreciate it. Uh, but hopefully they'll stick around and do uh, the next show, which is Jack Bishop. He's here with The Intersection, and uh, he will be, uh, um, uh, you know, doing the same thing. So call him. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I'm Alex Ben. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow night, 1030. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, <clears throat> my throat's going. Uh, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>